Hello and a very warm welcome to my new tutorial. Today it's all about free motion sewing on your domestic sewing machine. These were some doodles that I did last night just using up some scraps and uh, I'm going to turn this into a birthday card. Um, alternatively you can also um, make some bookmarks so it's quite a versatile um, skill to have. I used watercolour postcards but um, these are the, the weights but um, you can use bigger sheets obviously and just cut them down to size. All you need to make these little hearts is um, a bunch of scraps and I fold them over and then starting from here sort of go up diagonally come round and then I want to end up sort of roughly parallel to that first line but you can adjust the hearts because they don't always come out right first time so you can make different sizes oh that's quite nice um, if you wanted to adjust them for example this one here you can just fold them back and trim them off a little bit now I've prepared this earlier I've taken some of those hearts I've cut and just used a regular glue stick and put a little bit in the middle where you're not going to sew uh, just to fix them in place um, it makes the, the planning of where you're going to sew a lot easier if you don't have to worry about uh, these sort of uh, flying off and yeah let's take this over to the sewing machine and I'll uh, show you how to go about it I'm using this free motion foot and each brand of sewing machine will offer these as accessories if they didn't already come with your machine. Now there's two things to remember that you must do and one is to drop your feed dogs. On my sewing machine when I remove this part there's a little lever here and I just uh, flick it so they're down. And the other thing to do is to set your stitch length to zero. I usually warm up um, on a little bit of scrap paper, watercolour paper, and do some doodles just to get a feel for the motion. Um, I've got quilting gloves on because they've got silicone tips and they, um, they give you a nice grip on the paper so that you're sliding around less on here and have uh, a little bit more control. I'm going to start in the bottom point of that heart because that's where I ultimately want to end up with to move on to that uh, little yellow heart afterwards. Now this is a bit tricky because the, cat, the phone is exactly where my head would be so I hope um, this is going to work. sketched look I try not to go exactly over the first line so that um, you're sort of weaving in and out a little bit and um, I'm just going to trim this a little bit I'm going to trim this um, more later on okay and now I'll do a little doodle to then get over to the yellow heart
this pink card is overlapping the yellow i don't want to go over it i'm going in reverse direction and then uh, do this last of going around more than once is that you can correct any wonky lines and um, just compensate for them a little bit um, I mean it's, it's all freestyle so wonky is good wonky is going to be your friend And um, here's a little bookmark. So I've just cut one of those postcards in half and uh, punched a hole in it at the top. this and the minimum stitch length is 
two on my machine so I'll uh, see how that goes and the width I've got set to three and go over it again I just love the sort of irregularity the spacing it's uh, looking quite grunge I do like that bag in the compartment of my sewing machine and whenever I switch to a new needle for you know a new quilt or dressmaking project I keep the old ones uh, ready for paper sewing because they're still good so they can have a second life. So, this is the uh, finished bookmark and you can obviously cover this up if you want to either glue some fabric to the back or um, just some plain paper to cover the stitches and then uh, add a little ribbon this is a uh, sari silk ribbon in natural make a lovely little gift for somebody that you can send through the post or add as a little stocking filler to a gift. There you go. Now with watercolour paper you can get a lovely sort of beveled edge simply by tearing edge like this what see the difference that makes And I've got um, just a plain greeting card here and having taken off the edge this would fit perfectly on here now and I think I'm going to use double-sided sticky tape. You can use some um, liquid glue but sometimes I find if I add a little bit too much um, maybe the moisture in it makes the paper a little bit warped. And I do want to avoid that. So you just peel back the top. And then you can eyeball it. And 
Saturday you have a really lovely personal card for somebody. And obviously you can change up the motifs. You can do flowers or, you know, scenery, anything seasonal, Christmas, baubles. So there's lots of possibilities. So I hope you enjoyed today's project and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks very much for watching. Take care.